Hey everybody, it's Lo and welcome back to my channel, Lo Without Limits. In this video, I'm going to share five healthy habits that I've been implementing. So if you want to see that, then just keep watching. These five habits are super easy to implement and even though they're super easy, they're not something that I'm always doing or I'm always being super mindful of doing and just over these last few months and really focusing on my health after having surgery and just kind of being forced to really take a step back and slow down and rest a lot more, definitely re-looking at my health and thinking what are some super easy things that I can do and implement into my life and also take with me into the new year because we are going into that time of resolutions and thinking about like health, fitness, nutrition, all of that stuff, but you don't need to wait a few more weeks to do so. I'm not, and even though there is some travel coming up, there is the holidays and everything coming up, it's still a good time to be healthy and balance out all of the fun, all of the eggnog, including the almond eggnog, which is just as delicious. But anyway, these are my five tips, things that I've been doing. Number one revolves around food. I have a problem where I forget to feed myself. In the morning, I have my cappuccino and then I'll go to the gym some mornings. And when I do go to the gym, I come back, I have a protein smoothie, sometimes in my little Nutribullet with some spinach and blueberries and the almond milk. But lately I've been a little lazier and just getting a shaker cup with the protein powder, some cacao ashwagandha powder to keep me chill, a little bit of creatine, you know, all the powders. Shake that up with some almond milk and then hop in the shower so I can be fresh for the rest of the day. But after that, like, then I'll start working and I start doing things and I'll start going on a call and just all of these things start happening and then all of a sudden it's like 4 p.m. and I'm like, oh, I haven't had an actual breakfast or lunch. Like, those two drinks, a coffee or a cappuccino and my little protein shake don't really count. Yes, the protein is like 21 grams of protein. It's fantastic, it tastes delicious, but it's not a meal. And then I'll finally eat around four, and then Austin's like, okay, well, like it's dinner, like what should we have for dinner? Like right after I finish my 4 p.m. brunch. So the, what I'm really, really focusing on is eating, like actually feeding myself. And I talk about it all the time, like getting enough protein in, which is super important, like really focusing on protein for me at least like at a minimum 100 grams, ideally 120 to 130 grams, but just really focusing on getting protein in, getting fiber in, getting all those nutrients in and not waiting until the end of the day and being like, oh, I have not had food. Especially if you're somebody who wants to start to cut down on calories and maybe like recomp and work out and just kind of like focus on fitness more. If you're not eating a ton of calories, what do you have to cut down from? Going from low to lower, like that's not healthy. And that is when you really need to reverse the diet and start to slowly increase calories in a healthy way. That way your metabolism can be up and running and feeling good and in a really good spot. So by focusing on actually eating. I'm not eating a super early breakfast. If I'm going to the studio, I hit up Starbucks on the way, get some little easy egg bites for a few bucks. But usually lately what I've been doing is hard boiling eggs because it's super easy. I don't have to be doing a bunch of stuff. Each egg is six grams of protein. So if I have three, that's 18 grams. Having it with half of an avocado, maybe some smoked salmon to up that protein, olive oil, some salt, some pepper. So now you're getting protein and healthy fats and some good nutrients as well. So by having an actual breakfast, actual food, very protein focused, an actual lunch for me around like 2 p.m. And then by the time dinner comes, I didn't just finish my brunch. I can actually have dinner and that allows me to have more meals and to get more protein, more nutrients, more calories in for my day. And on a similar note with food, while I am eating more, having more actual meals, getting more food in, being mindful while I'm doing it. So not just hard boiling my egg, actually medium boiled, not hard boiled, and then scarfing them down, actually sitting, enjoying my food, tasting it, chewing your food, because that is where digestion begins, no matter what you're eating. Actually enjoying my food, not being distracted, not bringing my food up here and sitting at my desk and emailing and doing all this stuff and like mindlessly eating food. And then all of a sudden being like, where'd my food go? I didn't even enjoy it. Actually 
being with my food, enjoying it. And that also helps you because your brain is such a part of this instead of like mindlessly eating and then being like, oh, where's my food? I'm still hungry. Actually being with your food, chewing it fully, digesting, digesting well. And then once you do finish that, the same thing that you ate mindlessly, you feel full, you feel satiated and you feel like you're good to go and you enjoyed that food that you made or you bought. Another thing that I've been really focused on doing is setting my next day the night before. So once I had my surgery in early October, because I couldn't really work out, I would just kind of like sit and work. I was just working a lot. And now that I can work out a little bit more, I'm like, okay, well now that's something that I'm adding back into my routine. And before it, everything was just like on such a good routine. And now I feel like these last few weeks of actually going back to the gym, I've kind of been like trying to figure out what's going on. Like how do I actually fit this back into my schedule? Just having such a long amount of time off, like really threw me off. So now being able to the night before really look at my schedule and mean like, okay, what do I have for work tomorrow that like these meetings are going to happen. So like, I have to do that. I have to do this before, like here's my work checklist of things that need to get done or else I'll be behind and things will happen. So what do I actually need to do? Okay, so now can I go to the gym this day? Of course, also planning it out with my just gym schedule overall, like this week with travel. I've last week I did like one of this week's days on Friday. That way I could do the second one today, Tuesday, day before you're watching this. So then I don't feel like at the end of the week, I'm like, oh no, I didn't go to the gym enough. Like the week just shifted in this situation and I'm still going to do yoga tomorrow because while well, my day is busier and I'll be packing and I won't have time to like go to the gym to work out, especially at, it would probably be after work and that's never a good time to go to the gym. I'll be able to at least do yoga, do some form of movement. So really thinking like, okay, here's my week, the week before, and here's my day, the night before, and what is realistic? What can I do? And doing that these last couple of weeks and really just kind of taking like a big overview has been super, super helpful. And I've been so much more productive and I literally can do so much now and not feel overwhelmed. So I feel like while coming back from like these few weeks of everything being topsy-turvy to trying to figure out like, okay, how did I do all of this before? Like for me, it was actually a pretty good reset and now I can really look at things and be like, okay, I can be super productive, get everything I need to get done for work, for life, for fitness, for everything. And I feel like I'm in a much better place by being able to like take that step back and kind of reevaluate like what's important and seeing how things work out throughout the week and being a little bit more lenient. Usually I was so just like strict and rigid and it would stress me out. And now I'm like, things happen. One day you think you're bloated, that night you're getting your appendix removed. The fourth tip, I'm gonna actually jump back to food. So I definitely should have made it number three. But anyway, number food is relaxing number food. That's where my brain's at. Number four is relaxing with food. Again, ever since dealing with everything health-wise, I've come to learn in a weird roundabout way that I can eat gluten which is huge. And also kind of realizing like, I wanna live my life, I wanna enjoy things, and now that I'm like not feeling sick when I eat gluten, and like obviously if you have an intolerance, an allergy, a sensitivity like that, like don't be like, well I should just live my life and eat all the pasta. Like if you're gonna feel sick, please do not do it. Like I still can't do soy sauce, so I gotta be careful with that. Would I love to eat all of the Asian food that Austin recommends, of course, but my tummy would hurt, so I'm not gonna do it. Like still being smart about it, but at the same time, not living with restrictions. I know that like dairy, I don't feel my best. Am I going to completely cut it out? No, salt and straw has new flavors every month. I'm gonna have it once a month. Being able to just relax a lot more. I've also come to realize like a while back, like two years ago at this point, I did a video on keto for narcolepsy and I really wanted to try that out to see if it would help with just like my energy levels and like my brain with everything and through doing keto, not like the perfect keto sometimes. I think I've just come to realize like it didn't give me the benefits that I wanted in terms of like my brain feeling better and I feel like it was a little limiting and we still eat lower carb just because like that's how he feels great and of course I do feel good eating lower carb but I don't want to stick to like keto and like it has to be low carb everything like this morning I had a bagel because I went to the studio and there were bagels so I'm being smart about it like 
of course I'm gonna eat more carbs because like maybe tomorrow I'm doing a heavy leg day. So yeah, I'll have a few carbs to have a good leg day and lift a few extra pounds. But also like not doing, like not going crazy, no food restrictions, like not limiting myself or saying I have to eat a certain way. Just enjoying food, still eating healthy, still focus on nutrients, getting my protein in, but just definitely being a lot more relaxed and not limiting myself. And now I can try more. And again, not only is that good for just like my body overall, but it's also really good mentally, like not having those limitations or that stress around it or trying to figure out what you can and can't have, or is this too carby? Or I had this yesterday, so like maybe not today, like eat with how you feel. Like if something heavy and like pasta feels too heavy for you, like don't force yourself to eat it, kind of eat with how you feel, but not living with restrictions. Of course, again, unless you have like an actual sensitivity or allergy, then please be careful. And last but not least, tip number five, I'm gonna kind of make like a combo tip. So it's moving more slash moving outside, being outside. Again, not being able to move or even like go on walks in the neighborhood for so long. I felt like I was just so trapped and being able to like before I could go to the gym, before I could lift, before I could even like do yoga comfortably, once I could walk outside, it was just like, insane like there were days where i just like stayed in here and realized like oh i have not gone outside at all maybe i went to the roof for five minutes and i need fresh air and i need to step away from work if you have time in the middle of the day while the sun is still up because the sun sets so early to get outside get that vitamin d especially in the morning to like reset your circadian rhythm to wake you up to have your eyes and your skin and everything exposed to that light and just really really helping you especially during these darker winter months so getting outside and then bonus points if you can move outside if you have even just 30 minutes to take a super quick walk around the neighborhood or if there's a coffee shop down the street and you want a nice morning coffee like walking there instead so you can get your coffee but you're also walking but you're also outside if weather permits and just being able to have that fresh air and like take your brain away from work when you're sitting all day or you need like a midday break around your lunch you can eat your lunch and then like even just standing outside for five minutes just kind of detaching resetting and that way you can go back to all the other things that you need to do fully refreshed and then also just moving walking outside if you can, like stretch outside in the morning any way to just kind of like move your body again middle of the day you need some mental break from work going outside like stretching moving your body you've been sitting you've been like in the same position the whole time being able to just relax it's been super super helpful for my mental health and just for my body as well. And I do feel like a lot of these tips I have talked about before and I have implemented before and I've done in like morning routine and how to like have the best morning and sleep well. And yes, I have done them before, but I just feel like after these last few months and like after this whole like reset and trying to like get back into my own swing of things, all of this has kind of been like, oh right, because I haven't done that in like six weeks, which doesn't sound like a long time, but definitely feels like a long time and all of this just feels like we can relax, we can eat, we can move, take things day by day, having that step away from everything. Now it's like coming back to it so much more relaxed with just a new perspective and hopefully these five tips give you that good perspective as well, especially as things do get busy with the holidays and just going into the new year, just kind of being able to hit all of your goals feel your best, but at the same time, like do so in a relaxed way because you can work out all you want, you can eat well all you want, but if you're stressed and your body's always so tense, you're not getting all of the benefits. Definitely that balance of like feeling good inside and out. So hopefully these five tips help you out. I know they've been helping me out a lot these last few weeks. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below what your favorite tips are and what else you wanna see here on my channel. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe. I have a new video every Wednesday. So until the next one, thanks for watching.